this is a this is a complicated situation. All right, so I'm back in the shop today, working on this thing again. We're gonna get the rear links in it. So I'll show you what I got going on. We're gonna build something that looks pretty much similar to this. It's gonna come off right behind it, right here. Travel all the way back, back to there on each side. And then we'll build the upper links are gonna come off the frame here and go back. Then an airbag is gonna set like right in this area right here on the top link. I got a lot of work to get done, so I'll get after it. All right, there we go. All right, now we just gotta figure out how we want these. I'll cut all of those spots out. I'll drill a hole first. Then we'll be race ready. See if we can make it look like a mount. Something like that. Let's go see. Actually not bad. That's pretty much how she's gonna look right there. It's good we got one built. We're going to make the other one look exactly like this one. And we'll come back and weld them in. All right, there's finished product. Two of them that are directly, directly opposite, which is pretty unusual for me to do it right the first time. So I'm learning. I'm going to get them welded in here and we'll build some link on the bottom. We'll get that thing all dialed in. And then the top ones are the hard ones. It's got some, some challenges, but crap in the way. I'll show you what I got going on. All right, so whoever welded this truss on, got it a little bit, not as far over this way as the other side. So I'm gonna have to grind this back corner right here to fit over that, move it over just a little bit, and then you're gonna work. They fit perfect, Joe. In there, pretty snug, like I knew what I was doing. Amazingly enough, pretty good. So I'll take, grind that piece down, and we'll have it fitting in no time. All right, we got those all welded in, the back ones. Now I'm gonna make the front ones that go up by the transfer case. They need them to be exactly what the other ones are. They're four inches by three inches. We need them rounded on one corner. Go ahead and chop those things out. Old Landers made it to the shop. How was school? Good. I made a shit knob for my truck. Did you? This whole belt sander is a game changer. You can get them all exactly the same. And it doesn't throw crazy sparks like the other like my grinder does. Four parts exactly the same. Now we just gotta cut the taper to fit on the bar. And we got them. And then we can measure for links. And the bottoms are done. Put them in there. If you'll notice, I'm putting the nut on the right side. That's gonna be the side tapered more. As you all commented on my front end video, there's one bolt in there that's gonna have to get cut off. If you guys were right. I'm gonna have to cut it off to get it out. See, it's gonna come over and hit the front end. Oh. And I'm screwed up. First time ever, really. I mean, usually don't screw up until I do. <laughs> Doodly, I need more stuff in my hands. That's what I need. I need like four foot of tube. I'll go get some tube and cut two four footers. I'll be happy with that. Go ahead and weld this sucker in there. We're just gonna tack weld it in though. Stuff ain't ain't right it's way easier to cut a tack weld loose 
because we're just making this up as I go along. No. Hey, bud. You sit underneath the door. It's like it's warm in here. It's cold outside. I'm coming in. All right. Links are in it, mounts are almost made. Tomorrow, I'll have some links built. Yep, I'm done for the day. Back in the shop this morning. I'm back here at work, and this is the work. We're gonna weld those link bars in and get this rear working. So that's the game plan. We'll see if we can make it happen. All right, so I'm trying to find the center on this thing so I can get this put where it needs to go. This up. Ow. Like that. Ow. Ow. This sucks. This sucks bad. Ouch. Burnt myself. So a smart person would have put this on the hoist, but I can't because the arms hit back here. Just wasn't working out. Get this tacked in place. Life's gonna be a little easier. Maybe. All right, that wasn't fun. That should work right there. And that should work right there. Gonna try to tip over without any weight on it here. Seems safe, that'll work. I'll show you what I got. There is the lower links. They're, uh, they're not exactly what I had in mind, but they're gonna work. And then I can brace them here and off there, and plate a little plate across it. This is gonna get added onto, come back farther, and then I'm gonna brace down. This side, as you can see, the transfer case is taking up all space. This bar will barely touch at full squish. So I'll add on to this and come back. And I may put another crossbar behind it. Oh, I don't know what to do. Don't know if I like this yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about it and see. All right, so I've been staring at this for like 20 minutes. I hate it, I'm not gonna do it. So we're gonna go and swap this back and go with a traditional four link setup. Run my bottom bars that I put in. They're gonna be parallel out here on the outside of the frame. And then I'll tri triangulate the top ones to the corners. It's gonna work way better on the back of this. I just don't like that hanging down. I don't like the angle of the bars. I need them on a 10% up and I can't get that right now because they're hitting the transfer case and everything. So. I'm gonna redo. I like the length of my bars. I wanna keep them the same as the front ones. I just want them different. Cause I need, I don't want it hanging up. I plan on wheeling this thing and I don't wanna be stuck high centered. We'll fix it. All right, so all that progress I made, I undone it. It's all cut out. I fixed these things. They're gonna weld on and go straight, right up, right up along the side of the frame. So new plan is that i'm gonna carry on with it i may have to shorten the link i don't know if i like where it's ending up but we'll see all right i just got these links welded back in and look who showed up with food with food you're welcome thanks i'm gonna eat it so we just went to the mail today yep lloyd and linda hooked us up. Once again, people are awesome. People are awesome. So they sent us two snap-on ratchets, one for me and one for Matt's off-road recovery, and they said, I could choose, so orange it is. This one's Matt's, I'll take it to him later. <laughs> and then the, that, smoked yeah. salmon, baby. What, in I'm a gonna, box? Yeah, I'm gonna be eating that here shortly. It's like jerky. What? 
I've yeah. never had that before. Well, you may still not, because I'm going to eat this. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd and Linda. You guys are awesome. Let's get back to this. Paul just told me that this isn't going as planned, and he's having to make some serious adjustments. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, my plans have all been tossed out the window as of right now, and I'm replanning. I think we should talk about Gary's hoop on his Jeep. <laughs> It hoop. seems that everyone loves that hoop. It is. It's, it's caused quite a stir. Let me just tell you about this hoop. So I was leaving to go to California on the Golden Nugget Recovery, and I had to get that thing finished. Got the bumper all welded together, put the hoop on it, and it was ugly. I'll admit it. I hated it. But I ran out of time. I couldn't fix it. So. Gary's driving around with an ugly hoop on his Jeep right now. Mind you, Gary loves it. Or he just told us he loved it, I don't know. <laughs> it's ugly, I understand that. I'll fix it someday. But right now, it's gone, so I can't fix it. So just but, keep on commenting, I understand it's ugly. Just rub it in, go yeah, for it. Yeah, we like cantankerous comments, bring them on. Speaking of that, I think it's time for another segment. Welcome to another edition of Cantankerous Comments. Chris lives in reality, let's see about that. What a waste. I've lost all the little respect I had, never to watch this channel again. A hack. Well, you won't be missed. <laughs> see you later. Coming in hot from Jeff, Jeff Lewis. Do you know, lady, I only watch this video because of Paul's brilliant mechanical work? Do we have to listen to your constant rabble rabble? Yeah, you do. Amanda Wood says, get in the gut there, Paul. Yes, I am. I've earned every piece of it. <laughs> this old girl seems like a super nice person. I've seen multiple cantankerous comments from this sweet lady. Her name is none other than Sally Bunky Buckingham. Please, Michelle, just stick to filming and not talking. <laughs> well, that's quite a name. Dojuice Victimhood says, I hate people with these types of tires driving on the road. But he says, selfish, self-serving kids that never had a good father figure. Oh, so now you're hating on my dad, too. <laughs> Dang. He is not 16 years old. Grow up. Well, I'm 12, so get over it. Okay, from Gary Billen. Stop laughing so much, you ruined the video. Sorry that I'm not a jerk like you. Dirk Dingleberry? <laughs> That's good right off the bat. Your wife was thinking you're just like the brakes, a two pump chump. <laughs> How do you know what my wife's thinking? I don't even know what she's thinking. <laughs> so we have a fashionista in the house. From Sean O'Connor. What the F is with the jorts? How about a new rule? No jorts in the shop. 1995 called and they want their jorts back. <laughs> Paul's laughing. I like Capri's. Native oh. Candy 09? Well, that's quite a name. Well, since you acknowledged it in this video, you are an idiot. Nobody said anything cantankerous about me again. And I think that'll do it for now. Thank you so much for joining us on this segment of Cantankerous Commons. Back to the FJ build. All right, so I've had a ton of questions about this bumper that I bought for Gary's Jeep. It's eBay. It cost $284.90. It's actually pretty good, really. For 284 bucks, I couldn't go wrong. So They're not a sponsor of ours but we'll put it in our description for you guys that have been asking. Well, I need the button. You need the button? Yeah. What kind of a button? The easy button. <laughs> These rear links, everything has changed as of late. These are gonna be pretty relatively easy. I just gotta build them out, lock them in right there. They'll be fine. But trying to get my top ones to triangulate off of here, and an airbag setting somewhere there is going to be fun. 
I'm just trying to picture it all in my brain so I can convince myself it's gonna work and I don't do all this for nothing. I'm about to get a picture. I'm building another bracket that's gonna it's gonna mount on the side of the frame like so. This is gonna fit up in there like so. Go to the back. Then I'm gonna build another little angle piece that goes over to the frame, ties all this in. You got an Elvis Presley vibe going on right now with your collar. Both sides are only one. I only fill this side up. Oh, they're both up. Oh yeah. Oh my wow. gosh. That's a slippery little sucker. Name that movie. Uh, no clue. Are you kidding me? No, not one. <sighs> Who knows that phrase? Julia Roberts says it. You still got nothing? I got it now oh, that you said right. that. I'm trying to think of what it's called though. Pretty woman. Pretty woman. This is definitely happening right now. Oh yeah. I am not ready for winter and for fires. The Utah weather has bypassed fall okay. and went straight to if winter. If you don't like Utah weather, you just wait five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> It'll change. Do you think what you're doing right now is interesting or should I stop filming? Are you interested? No. Are you entertained? <laughs> <laughs> Name that movie. Yeah, that's a good one. We're just full of movie quotes God. today. I'm rolling on them. Do you got any, Scout? Do you got any at all? Any movie quotes? All right. That's going to be just Jim Dandy Bob right there. Scout, you're going to want to move. Go on. Get. Yep. Or we're going to get cantankerous comments so we don't but take I'm, care of our pets. I'm blinding my pet. Out. Well, it's hard to tell yet. Oh, I think she's good. All right, back to what I was doing a minute ago before I was rudely interrupted by some bad engineering. Okay, but this is gonna work. I'm pretty much okay with this design. Okay, so this is only partially built, but that's where. She's gonna mount something like that, just so the bolt barely clears the bottom. Then, gonna 45 this down, weld another piece, well, actually this same exact piece that I cut off, I'll turn over and weld right back onto the frame there. So we'll be welded here, up the other side, all around that. I, I'm digging this, this is gonna work. I gotta figure out where to cut it. Now to make a direct copy of this one, out of that one. It looks like we got them done. There's some not done. I don't know what them, what they're gonna be yet. But that is the gist of what they are. I think that's gonna work. Now I just gotta grind them up and tack weld them in place and then I can start the rest. What were you looking for? Tape measure. I lose these things faster than I can have them. I'm sure, I, oh, it's sitting on top of the rear end. Look at that, found it. There it is, now I got two. I gotta have this the same length. From there to the center of that is 57 and an eighth. I think I read that wrong. Nope, didn't can't trust someone with dyslexia to give you the right answers most of the time. It's a, uh, it's hosed me more than once. Let's just say that. But it hasn't deterred you at all. That's very valid. All right, so I wasn't joking about the whole dyslexia situation. I read numbers backwards all the time. So when I measure something, I have to read it twice and then look at it again because sometimes the numbers are backwards and if I wanted 31 or I'm 26 it's gonna be 62 and then it doesn't work in my brain and so the reason I even told you that because no one probably knew obviously is because a lot of people have different problems and no matter what you got you can figure out a way to make it work for you it doesn't always work sometimes you end up cutting it back apart because you measured wrong and you read the numbers that weren't there instead of the ones that really were but it all works out you just got to deal with what life gives you and do the best you can. 
You make lemonade out of lemons. Lemonade. <laughs> that should be 57. That's pretty dang close, really. We're dang close to the exact same angle. I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm gonna tack that in. This is what's winning is looking like right now today. I'm glad it's that looks winning now. so much better than it did before. It was so ugly before. It almost looked as bad as Gary's bumper. <laughs> Not quite. Sorry, Gary. There's one critical measurement I didn't do. That's why you tack welded it. 4.9. Oh. Oh, well, I can deal with that. I'm better than I thought I was. <laughs> it's like a Kenny Rogers song. Do you know what song? I thought that was uh, Didn't, I didn't Toby Keith's that. song. No. I ain't as good as I once no, was. No, Kenny Rogers where but the kid I'm good throws once. the ball up in the oh. air and strikes himself out. Oh, didn't That's know exactly. he was such a good pitcher. I didn't know I was such a good guesser. Back to the task at hand. He's coming down. And we're going to start upper linking it. All right, so I ran Johnny joints on the bottom. And... They work fine, but they weren't going to hold up to what I needed because my airbags are going to set on these top links. So I called up TMR and they hooked me up with some of these lifetime joints. These things are massive. These should hold all the weight of everything I need. They're greasable, fully rebuildable, should work. TMR stuff's awesome. I have got zero complaints. Everything I've got from them has been super on time and good. I'm gonna have to bend a hoop up over the transfer case and down on that side. I can make something that barely clears. By the way, are you guys all impressed right now? You have real shoes on with no shoelaces in them? <laughs> I'm impressed. I don't have flip flops on down to the shop well, today. that's because it's hoodie weather outside. It is, it's cold. But I hope you guys are all impressed. Oh, this is, a, this is a complicated situation. You know what? I should call up old Dave Chappelle from Dirt Every Day and be like, hey, you're the airbag master. Why don't you come and airbag this thing? If I had his phone number, that would probably help. But <laughs> I don't have that, so it's really not even an option. So I'll just keep struggling. We're going to get some rear links built while the uppers get cracking on this so I've determined I'll show you they're gonna tie in right here both sides I cleaned the frame off that's where they're gonna go they're gonna tie into the rear end up there on an angle airbags gonna set somewhere right here ish I think I'm gonna cut some six inch pieces of this rectangle tube and we'll get started all right, so on to this point. You've seen me do this a bunch of times, cut these out. Now I'm gonna cut an angle on it that I think is pretty close to the frame where I need it to point to the, my rear end. So we're gonna try that. If that doesn't work, we'll do something different. Grind her up, and we'll find out. That is my mount gonna work perfectly. I'll show you in a minute how it bolts to the, or welds to the frame. First things first, I gotta build another one just like it, but opposite for the other side. All right, finished product up in there and tack them in place so we can see what we got going on. Get that in the way. I think those are mounted. Now we can build some stuff. All right, now we're gonna get our first real look at how these are gonna go. Looks like I need 34 and a half inches of tube, of square tube. Unchartered territory. I don't know exactly where I want that airbag to set on it. We're gonna figure it out though. 
All right, these are primarily for mock-up purposes right there. Just got to figure out where the airbag's going to need to set on those links to get the travel out of it that I'm looking for. So we're going to tack all this in place, lift it up and down, and figure out where it needs to go. If I was a math musician, I could just use paper and a pencil, but uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm a realist, so I'm going to do it this way. So Michelle just showed up. Hi. She's been doing some stuff today, so she keeps this business floating. So, all right, back to the task at hand. Let's see if this works. So I'm gonna have to do something different here because those are hitting my links. It's getting ridiculous. Everything's it's fighting me. All right, we're we're at zero right now, right there. And we need to be at 16 inches. There. You know one measurement I forgot to do? So I forgot to figure out where our starting point was. I need to know how much travel I got to have right here and where to set the airbag. We'll call that five inches. We're on the lock. Okay, that is at an inch and a half. 16 inches. Let's see what the travel is there. Okay, so we're at eight and a half inches. Man, I could set those airbags right there. Because I have, that's my airbag link mount design. I drew it in the back window. Um, Let's see it. Here, get that so you can see it. I don't know camera. if you can see it in the camera or not, but it's there, trust me. Four inches. Fully collapsed is four inches. And fully stretched is 13 and a quarter inches. So it will fit right there because we only have eight and a half inches, right? All right, well, as Paul was working on the FJ, look who showed up. It's me. It's, it's Matt. Matt. Now that's looking pretty good. It's coming along nicely. What do you think about this, Matt? I think this is a cool project. This is a big milestone we've reached with this thing. Rear suspension's not done, but it's all mocked up. I still have to build the right top trailing arms, but this thing rolls. It's on its own axles again. It's a pretty big deal. And we're gonna roll it from this bay to that bay because we've got stuff going in this bay. Maybe uh, a little nugget of some sort. Next week we'll get all the airbags and stuff in it, but right now I gotta get to work on the golden nugget. Thanks for watching.